So it's the end of tax season, which means everybody is out to get their fair share back from the government. That much we all know. But what we don't know is how federal tax law can affect different communities, and particularly the black community. You see, America has always had a huge wealth gap between the majority and minorities, and a large part of that is due to the federal tax laws. Laws that were ratified in 1913, which dramatically changed a lot of Americans' lives. You see, this is how federal income tax law works. It rewards the wealthiest Americans, which happens to be white non-Hispanic. But that's not why there's such a huge gap between the majority and the minorities in this country. You see, we have something called tax breaks, which a lot of us take advantage of. But it's the actual tax breaks that we choose to take advantage of and focus on that might be hurting the black community. And now new research finds black taxpayers are three to five times more likely to receive one of these letters. Now here's a tax audit that was done by Stanford University on the IRS. And if you know anything about the IRS, they don't track race when you file your taxes. But what it does track is the tax breaks that we use, like the earned income credit or the child tax credit. Both of which, which are very important to Americans as a whole, not just black Americans. But even with that being said, how is it possible that they came up with a way to tell race when you're filing your taxes? Well, that's exactly what this audit is about. And it's not an old audit either. It just came out at the beginning of this year. You see, what Stanford University did was they took a system of 148 million tax returns in partnership with the United States Department of Treasury, and they came up with their own tax audit to distinguish between black taxpayers and non-black taxpayers. And how is this important? Because for the first time, it gives us a basis model to use all of our opinions and assumptions off of. Interesting, but let me hit you with another point. What if the tool they're using is wrong? Let me be very clear to the viewership. The federal tax law system isn't governed by humans. It's governed by an algorithm. And unlike the algorithms that guide our social media apps, this one has access to your financial life. It will red flag anyone trying to cheat the system. So I will say this to the black community as a whole. Could it be possible that the IRS's algorithm is targeting tax fraud, underreporting, suspicious activity, and my least favorite of all, our lack of financial education when it comes to filing our taxes? Tax season is here, and the IRS says it is seeing an increase in tax fraud and phishing scams at a rate it hasn't seen in a decade. The IRS is hiring tens of thousands of new agents to audit their taxes. It's hundreds of low-income families impacted by IRS audits. Going after low-income earners are easy targets for an audit. It's less work for the IRS and gets done faster while wealthier filers have the resources to fight the agency. Here's a list of the top 10 most audited counties in the United States. And right next to it is the black population and the white population percentage in those counties. And from the percentage, you can see that the black population far outweighs the white population in these particular counties. So then now my question becomes a why. Why are these counties audited more than other counties in the United States? And why are all 10 counties predominantly black? So let's break this information down, starting with why all but two of these counties are located in Mississippi. Now, if you know anything about Mississippi, then you know Mississippi has some of the poorest counties in United States, which just happens to coincide with the black population, which take up the majority of these counties. But what they don't tell you is that Mississippi is very rural, meaning that most cities have a small population and are very country-like. I mean, their largest city, which is Jackson, Mississippi, only had a population of 149,000 people and has been steadily declining over the years. And for the counties that I listed previously as the most audited, all of those counties have a small population as well, meaning that a lot of the information that we gathered is only a small sample size, which could be considered inconclusive to some, but more than telling to others. So let's stir the pot a little bit farther. This is Holmes County, one of the poorest and least educated counties in Mississippi, a county we could say is full of poverty, the exact type of county that the federal income tax laws are meant to help, specifically through the tax breaks I mentioned earlier, like the earned income tax credit, a tax credit created solely to lift those out of poverty. But the 
IRS uses it as a double-edged sword. For those of us that most need it are also the ones that are picked by the IRS the most for audits. According to national investigative reporters at ProPublica, people who claim the earned income tax credit are more likely to be audited by the IRS. The average person getting that tax credit makes less than $20,000 a year. All over claiming one little tax credit, right? Not quite. You see, the federal government targets the earned income tax credit the most simply because it is the most problematic area of tax returns. So simple mistakes like missing dependents or misreporting income can get you flagged, especially if you're claiming this specific tax credit. Here's an article I found on our government website by Congressional Research Services, a credible source that's used by Congress itself. And in this article, they specifically highlight why those in southern states like Mississippi are audited more than those in other states. And I quote, because of the higher audit rate of the EITC returns, areas of the country with the higher share of taxpayers claiming the EITC, including southern eastern states and some western states, would be expected to have a larger share of their taxpayers audited, simply because that's who's claiming this tax rate more than others. And furthermore, reiterating what we already know, the article suggests that the earned income tax credit claimants from the states are more likely to be flagged as non-compliant, something we said earlier in the video. Tax fraud, underreported suspicious activity all of which will, will fall under non-compliance now I know some of you are thinking the IRS audit rate is very low so your chances of being audited aren't very high in the first place well I'll tell you this not only are billions of dollars being poured into the IRS to improve manpower but also machine learning and AI so before you use someone who isn't a verified tax professional ask yourself this how would this affect me in the future and am I comfortable putting my final financial life in someone else's hands. You see, the IRS is a very powerful government agency that has the power to levy your assets such as wages, bank accounts, social security benefits, and even your retirement income. And let's not even talk about any real estate you own which could be sold to satisfy your tax debt. So is it fair to say that the federal income tax laws target the black community? Not necessarily. Is it fair to say that the federal tax law targets the poor and uneducated communities? Probably so, but I'll let you as the viewer decide that. How do you think the federal income tax law affects you specifically? You can answer using the comment section down below. I hope the video was helpful, and if it was, consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And remember, never mess with the IRS.